about a month ago now, I uh, made a little update video for you guys. And I'm not doing a major one today, but I just wanted to talk about a few things kind of addressed in that video and kind of expand upon them. Now, one of the few things we did in that video is um, put some terrestrial moss in an aquarium. Now, here's the 10 gallon right now. Still growing back, I'm figuring out some plant stuff and like uh, thinning out my floaters and all that stuff. But you can see here, the terrestrial moss, if I can point it out there, uh, is still alive. There's a slightly better view of it, but yeah, you can see it is still alive. Now, um, I'm not gonna say it's thriving, because it's very clearly not. You can tell it's very spindly, and it's clearly reaching for some light down there. But the point stands, you can grow terrestrial moss underwater. Now, I don't know what species this works with, I don't know which species of moss this is, but it's kind of just proof of concept, letting you guys know if you're really that curious about it, uh, it definitely can be done, and uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, I'm gonna try out some other species as well. But I just wanted to update you guys on that and let you know that while it doesn't thrive, it's definitely not a replacement for something like java moss. Uh, it can definitely be done. So that's pretty cool. Now this anacharis looking plant is called badge moss. And this, one of the few species of moss I like know the name and like what it looks like. And I know for a fact this one can be grown underwater. Now how well is this moss going to do? Well truth be told I don't know the answer to that question, but can hurt to try. So, I'm just going to rinse off the dirt. Alright, there's the rinsed plant. Still some dirt in there, obviously, but that tank's a mess anyway, so I'm not too concerned about it. So let's go chuck it in there. So here's the tank, you can see all the fish in there, and here is our clump of moss. And uh, yeah, we're going to put this in there, so... Tweezer time, I guess. I guess we'll just put it next to it. I'm gonna try to plant it a bit. I know mosses tend to prefer nutrient poor soil, so it's gonna be interesting to see how this does uh, with the dirt and the wallstadness of this tank, because this is a dirted aquarium. For those of you that don't know, that essentially just means, these tweezers aren't gonna work, are they? I'll just use my hand. It essentially means the tank has a layer of actual like soil uh, underneath the gravel that provides nutrients to the plants and stuff. Of course, this tank's a pretty bad example because most of the plants in here uh, aren't even rooted in it. But hopefully we should get some new plants in here soon. We're just kind of experimenting for now. But yeah, the tank's got a bit murky there, but that should be pretty interesting. And now on my arm here, there are a bunch of floaters you can see. That's some salvinia. It's not focusing, but whatever. But that's actually a terrible segue, but that's going to be the next topic of this video. So, um, yeah. Thank you aquarium for reminding me of what I wanted to talk about because I kind of forgot. Okay, so why do I even want to talk about floating plants? Well, the simple answer is that floating plants are amazing. They do a lot of great things for aquariums, and I think it's important that people understand how great these things are because I think a lot of people think either weeds, because, you know, they grow super fast, so they think, you weeds, take over my aquarium, no thanks, or they think, you know, too dark, not enough light for all my plants, or not enough room for my fish. Or just generally, some people just think, you know, they prefer not to have plants, they don't think they're not helpful, or they don't think they look as good. Well, I'm going to tell you why floaters are so useful and everything great about them. Well, first of all, floaters provide a ton of hiding spaces and, like, comfort for your fish. Now, this is my black water tank, and you can see my reflection in it, but... You can see how long the roots are of the floaters here. And what this does is it creates a very nice lush environment and it also helps the fish kind of have a sense of calmness or like a sense of, um, I guess, peace or like, um, like that they don't have a threat kind of coming to them if you get what I'm saying. Like for example, I keep splash tetras in here. Now splash tetras, uh, I'll put the scientific name on screen because I always forget it, but splash tetras are notorious jumpers. They are like, you think hatchet fish are jumpers? No. These guys will fly out of your tank. They actually breed by jumping out and laying uh, eggs on leaves. I need to put something here for them to breed with again, but that's what they're known for doing. Now, I don't have a lid on this tank, obviously. I had this stupid mesh thing for a while, but uh, it was preventing plants from getting enough light, and it was also, it's just kind of ugly, right? It was a good makeshift for a while, but eventually I decided I don't need it anymore, because I only ever had one Splash Tetra jump from this, and that was back when uh, my floaters weren't as dense. So essentially, 
with all these floaters, now I'm not saying you're not going to have jumpers with floaters, but essentially not only does this create sort of a barrier for them to jump out of, I mean obviously there's areas where they can still jump from, but it definitely creates sort of a naturalistic lid sort of thing going on here. But you know, it also creates, you know, a sense of peace with the fish. It helps them to stay calm, relaxed. I don't know what the proper terminology would be, but essentially it, it's like there's such a dense jungle for them to hide in that there's not a, when something happens, like when there's a loud, like noise or startling thing or something, you see they don't, they get startled a bit, but not too much because they know they're, they're kind of, they're safe and secure in those plants. I think that's pretty cool. Another thing floaters are great for is if you have other plants, they are great indicators, meaning they will show deficiencies faster than any other plant. So if you're really into keeping your plants healthy and growing, you'll see, especially on Salvinia, Salvinia is great at it. It'll start to brown or something. You can see it's browning a bit in here. Uh, it's doing healthier over here though. I think it's just that piece, those pieces happen to be losing nutrients to all the other plants, but they are the kind of plants that will tell you, hey, you know, dose your ferts or whatever in this tank. So that's really cool about them. They make great indicator plants. They just look nice too. But another thing I want to talk about is that floaters are some of the easiest aquarium plants ever. Okay, I have very like varied lighting in here. Okay, that light is awful. There's like a halide light, like, I don't know, it's, it's some terrible thing. Floaters grow like weeds. This is a powerful fluval light, it's amazing. Look at those red roots floaters, these are the most beautiful floaters on the planet. If you have a strong light, you will get plants that look like these. Mine haven't flowered yet, strangely, but you can get these beautiful plants, and why wouldn't you want these in your tank? And they just totally cover the top. So if you have a very, if you have like an open top aquarium and you're kind of bored of how it looks, you have all these plants that you can look at. You can have, you can put springtails or ice pods even in there. I had some ice pods inhabiting the water lettuce in here. I'll put a picture on screen of one. And you can just have a much more interesting and much more diverse environment. Because for me, an aquarium is about creating an ecosystem. It's not just about putting fish in a cube. It's not about having like a sterile empty thing. It's about having an actual ecosystem. So they really help to create that. And as you can see, they just look absolutely gorgeous. Uh, one thing I want to talk about though is some floater myths. I'm putting that in quotes because it's not really a myth. But I'm always told floaters can't handle humidity. And while that's definitely the case of some, for example, water lettuce, uh, lighting can overcome that. For example, this, this area right here is extremely humid when it's filled up. I mean, the lid's fully on. They, they get a bit of airspace, but you can tell like the water droplets and stuff really beat down on this lettuce. You can see how like melted it is, but if you feel it, now you can't, but this is actually incredibly thick and healthy growth other than the fact that, you know, it's being pelted down by what is essentially rain and melting. But if you have a strong enough light, you are going to get healthy, like water lettuce and stuff like that, even if it is being deficient and even if it is um, melting a bit. So humidity, not a huge issue for a lot of these floaters. Really, water lettuce is the one you really have to watch out for. But from my experience, Sylvanian red roots, Red roots will grow pretty much anywhere. Give them light, they'll turn red. Otherwise, they're gonna stay green. Salvinia will literally grow anywhere. Duckweed, people, you know, say what you want, people. Duckweed's a great plant. And they're just really good at creating a nice, sort of comfy, darker aquarium environment that can look really nice. This tank isn't the best example, but the Blackwater is a great example of that. You know, it's a very cozy environment. It creates a lot of character to the tank. It makes it more interesting. And it's sort of a way of, um, it's an easy way of having something like an anacharis or hornwort style jungle, but in a different sort of way. Like you have all these roots creeping down. And I don't know, I think it creates a really cool effect. That's just my thoughts on floaters. I just thought I'd share them with you guys. They help your fish to be a little more relaxed, a little more calm, a little more acclimated to your environment. They can house, uh, actually this is an interesting point, they can house a lot of microfauna. My Dario Dario is living in here. I'll put a picture of him on screen because I doubt we'll see him, but I will look for him. Oh, there, is that him? Yeah, there he is in the corner there. But this guy is, a, this is a self-sustaining setup. I'll make a video on this soon, but essentially buy floaters from a pond garden store, not from your LFS or an aquarium store. I'm gonna tell you why, because well, this isn't always true, but especially you can get tissue cultured floaters. That's what I've seen. I don't know why you would buy tissue cultured Sylvania. I don't know why you would tissue culture Sylvania, but it exists. But, uh, you know, a lot of aquarium stores, this isn't true of all of them. I think like this more true of like an LFS is probably going to do this less. But a lot of aquarium stores will quarantine their plants so you don't get pests, right? Because people think snails are bad or whatever. But I'm making a video on that at some point soon. But Get these from a garden or pond store. That's where all of these are from. You are guaranteed to get microfauna, which means if you have a small setup like this, not a lot of fish and you know heavily planted, you can create a literal self-sustaining environment. I have fed this Dario once 
and it was um it was some frozen daphnia he didn't eat it fed him it again so i fed him twice and he hasn't eaten it either time as far as i'm aware and there's no way those two feedings would have sustained him anyway so you can literally create a self-sustaining aquarium which is kind of crazy self-sustaining is a you don't have to feed it obviously larger sizes it doesn't work but you can house microfauna in these environments when i move these water lettuce you'll see little like critters fly out of there and the fish eat them up so that's really cool in my opinion i think it adds to environment a lot so that's another benefit of them buy them you're likely to get you're likely to be able to start a live food culture so that's pretty dang cool they're just they're just great man i can't think of a single negative of floaters there's cash but yeah, that was just my little take, like hot take, whatever thing on floating aquarium plants. They're they're great. They look beautiful. They fill up space along the top. They help that one area of aquariums that always look empty and kind of sterile to be really filled up with like a lush environment. It's like another part of the tank to look at too. You know, I take off the lid. I see, oh my God, my plants have grown so much. Uh, you can have springtails and ice pods. Ice pods probably less practical, but I've seen it happen. So, I mean, it can definitely happen. It just makes your aquariums a lot more lively, a lot more nature, natural, that's the word. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just thought I'd share that with you guys. That's just my opinion on some things. And uh, I'll check in with you guys in another video. Uh, and I'll update you guys on how this moss is doing, but it's pretty cool. But yeah, that that's really all it is today. I just thought I'd share that with you guys. I thought you'd appreciate it. So yeah, uh, floaters are great. Put them in your tanks. Start a live food culture by getting someone a pond snore. Pond snore. Pond store. Even, you know, collect some in the wild too. Here's a, here's a somewhat failed work in progress jararium thing. Video on that soon, but uh, there's scuds in there. So that works too. But yeah, that's all I really got to say. Just take a look at those beautiful red roots.